Math 31, welcome to section 6.3. We're going to introduce logarithmic functions in this section. So by the end of this section, I, I want us to be able to write the equivalent exponential and logarithmic equations and evaluate logarithms. So maybe you've heard of a logarithm before, maybe you haven't, but let me just give you a little preview of what's to come. So logarithms will help us solve exponential equations that are tricky to do by hand. And what I'm gonna start us with, um, I'm gonna start us with some exponential equations that are not tricky to do by hand. So let's say I gave you something like this, three to the x is equal to nine. All right, now if you took a look at that, I think it would be relatively easy to solve for x because nine can be written as a power of three. You know this is three squared. So I think here you would tell me how, hey, no problem, I've got x equaling two. And if I gave you something like this, three to the x was equal to 27. Well, since 27 is also a power of three, it's three cubed, you'll say, well, you know what? I think x is equal to three. But where things get a little funky and a little gray is what if I told you three to the x was equal to 12. All right, what do you do when the number on the right side of this equation is not a power of this base, right? So 12 is not a power of three. So, so what do I do there? And in terms of x, if we had to get some gut feelings, right, three to the x is 12, I think it's, it's reasonable to say x is between two and three because we know three squared is nine and three cubed is 27 and 12 is in between there. And if I had to guess what x was, and again, I'm only gonna guess right now, we'll get to the end of this chapter or a section and we'll be able to say for sure what it is. But I think if I had to guess, I would say x is maybe like 2.2. And I would say it's closer to two than it is to three because 12 is much closer to nine than it is to 27. Now again, this is just a guess. I haven't I don't want to say I have no idea what the x value is. I know it's between two and three, but I don't know where it falls between two and three. And so this was the, the motivation behind coming up with logarithms. Mathematicians were asking themselves, well, what do we do when we have two powers on either side and they're not the same base? And the answer to that was something called a logarithm. So I'm gonna show you how this x is really solved by taking the log base three of 12. And I want you to just take a look at that, that notation. It's pretty funky to look at, but we would say this exponent is defined by this logarithmic expression, all right? And what this is saying is x is the, the power you, or excuse me, x is the exponent you need on three to get it up to 12. All right, and so that's what we defined x to be. So for a logarithm, we have a logarithm of base b of some positive number x satisfies the following definition. So as long as your argument's positive, as long as your base is positive and it's not equal to one, you have y equaling log base b of x is equivalent to b to the y equaling x. So let me unpack this a little. We would refer to this as a logarithmic equation. Logarithmic equation. And we refer to this as an exponential equation. All right, and this again, it's a logarithmic equation because it has a log and an equal sign. This is an exponential equation because it has this exponent, this power with the variable up in the exponent and it has an equal sign. Let's get some terms down. All right, this expression here, this x, you'll hear me refer to this as the argument of a logarithm, okay? And I've mentioned throughout this course that we have three domain issues. We have problems when we have fractions, radicals, or logarithms, so we're picking up this third domain issue. This argument must be positive strictly greater than zero. It can't be equal to zero. It can't be negative. So we need to make sure whatever is in this argument, and sometimes you'll see parentheses around this argument protecting it, that argument needs to be positive. 
And I also want to point out when you see log base b of x, this is not multiplication, it's not log times x. All right, this is log of x. So if I was to say that expression out loud, I would say log base b of x. All right, and I want to stress the of, it's not times x. All right, even though sometimes in word problems we use of to mean multiplication, this just isn't the right context. All right, so if you ever see a logarithmic equation like log base b of x equaling y, it has an equivalent exponential equation, b to the y equaling x. So, so let's talk about this. I want you to take note that the base of your logarithm is the same as the base of your power, okay? And I want you to take a look that this logarithm that's equal to y, right? y becomes the exponent. So logarithms are exponents. All right, they're very specific exponents. So whatever your exponent in your power, that's what your logarithm is equal to. And the argument goes on the other side of that equal sign. Now I'm gonna show you, back when I learned this, I always wrote this the other way. So I would say log base b of x is equal to y. And then I called it the circle equation. And, and just watch me do this. This is not anything technical. Nobody calls it the circle equation. But when I was trying to remember how to go from one form to the other, the thing that was clear in my head is I knew the base of the logarithm was the same as the base of my power. That I, I was solid on. So I knew I always started here, and then I would draw this little cheesy circle. I would say I would go here, and then I would hop over an equal sign. So I knew b to the y would be equal to x. I knew if I went in that order, those were the letters that played out. So I started here, I saw B, moved over here, got to Y, must be equal to X. So that was how I helped just myself getting through learning logarithms and changing logarithmic forms or logarithmic equations into exponential equations. If that works for you, great. And I call this the circle equation. I, it, that's utter nonsense. Nobody calls it the circle equation, but it was just something that helped me when I was learning about logarithms. So again, we read y equaling log b of x as the logarithm with base b of x, or log base b of x. Again, it's not log base b times x. There is not a multiplication symbol in there. There's a parentheses, especially if you have a more complicated argument. When it's just a monomial like this, we just tend to leave it without the parentheses. The logarithm y is the exponent to which b must be raised to to get x to get x, excuse me. All right, so let's start trying to play with a couple of these. Now, before we officially get into example one, I'm gonna just scribble some logarithms on the side because I want us to get some feels for this. I know it seems so foreign the first time you see logarithms. So before we get into all of this, I just wanna try some examples here on the side. I want you to think about more obvious ones like this. All right. So if I gave you log base 5 of 25, this number collectively, that whole expression there, is an exponent. And it's the exponent that you need on 5 to get to 25. So how do you get from your base to your argument using exponents? Well, what power, what exponent do I need on 5 to get to 25? I need 2. So this entire expression, log base 5 of 25, it's really saying what exponent did I need right here? What exponent did I need on 5 to get to 25? And I needed a 2. That's it. All right, let me try something like log base, let's go 4 of 16. All right, what exponent? Oops, you can barely see that. Let me keep shifting this up. Sorry about that. All right. What exponent do you need on 4? to get to 16, and I, I hope you would see that four squared gets you to 16, so log base four of 16 is also two. And I could do a bunch of these, right? I could do log base seven of 49, right? Collectively, that is an exponent. That whole expression, it's just an exponent. What exponent do you need on seven to get to 49? Two. And I could do a gajillion of these, but let's just change it up so that I don't always have an exponent of two. If I did, log base 2 of 8, all right, what exponent do you need on 2 to get to 8? So 2 to what power gives you 8? And I hope you would say 2 cubed, right? Because if I wanted to start to write these 
as equivalent exponential equations, I could say 2 cubed was equal to 8. Right over here, I could say 7 squared was equal to 49. Here, I could say 4 squared was equal to 16. And here, I could say 5 squared was equal to 25. So every logarithmic equation has an equivalent exponential equation, and you can use the circle equation. Again, that circle equation that I made up when I was learning this stuff, I knew I started with 5. I went 5 squared equals 2. Right? And that's how I knew to draw, or excuse me, to write my equivalent exponential equation. All right, so let's try this. We're going to go back and forth. So if I tell you 3 to the 4th is equal to 81, that is an exponential equation. We see the power here, 4 is up in the exponent. How do I get that into logarithmic form? Okay, so here we go. Whatever the base of your power, that will be the base of your logarithm. So I know I'm going to have log base 3. All right, and then I need a number here, and I need a number here. Ultimately, you always have three numbers, right? You have the base, you have the exponent, and then you have what it's equal to. I have the base, I have the argument, and then what it's equal to. All right, so let's try and figure this out. I've been saying the logarithm, the entire expression as a whole, is an exponent. What was the exponent over here? It was 4. So my 4 goes to the right of the equal sign. Now I'm going to start erasing these bubbles as I fill these numbers in. All right. And that would mean 81 becomes my argument. So ultimately, let me erase this so we can do it from the beginning. I have log base 3 of 81 is equal to 4 because, again, this entire expression as a whole, that represents an exponent. What exponent do you need on 3? To get to 81, well, 3 to the 4th is equal to 81, so that exponent was 4. Equivalent, or we have the logarithmic form, exponential form, they're equivalent to each other. And if I use my little circle equation, I'd start with 3. I'd say 3 to the 4th equals 81, and there it is. Okay? All right. So let me move this up so we can get all of these into view, and we'll just go through them. I don't quite have all of them in the view. I'm going to keep on moving up. There we go. All right, so as we go through this, let's see what we got here. I have log base 1 half of 8 equaling negative 3. So just take note, there's my argument, there's my base, there's my exponent. All right, and just take note, the argument's positive, it would have to be, okay? My base, um, yeah, my base is also positive, so all of these are good things. All right, so if I want to write this in equivalent exponential form, I know the base of my logarithm is equal to the base of my exponent. And when it, you try and get into exponential form, again, you have three spots. You have the base, you have the exponent, and you have what it's equal to. Base of my logarithm has to be the base of my power, okay? I know the logarithm is always equal to the exponent, so the exponent's going to go here. And then my argument becomes what that power is equal to. Now I'm going to erase this and write it up a little better. But I want you to see how we relate logarithms to exponents. Okay. Oh, actually, I'll put this in parentheses just because... Okay, and if you're wondering about 1 half to the negative 3 being equal to 8, we can check it. 1 half to the negative 3, well, we know 1 half to a negative power means take the reciprocal. So I'm going to take the reciprocal of 1 half, which is 2. Once I take the reciprocal, I can drop the negative, um, x, the negative in the exponent, and 2 cubed is equal to 8. All right, so that's working. Okay. So now let's go backwards, exponential form back to logarithmic form. So I know I have log and I have three numbers. Okay, the base of my exponent will become the base of my logarithm. The exponent itself is what the logarithm is equal to because logarithms are exponents. And then what my power was equal to fits into my argument. All right, so let me erase this and write it up without those circles there. So we're going to get log base 10 of 1,000 is equal to 3. And let's just check it, make sure this is making some kind of sense. 
logarithms in and of themselves are exponents. So what exponent do you need on 10 to get to 1,000? So again, 10 to what power gets you 1,000? And it's 10 cubed that gets you 1,000. That's why that exponent is 3. All right. Moving along, we've got log base 5 of 1 over 125 equaling negative 3. Well, I'm going to write this in equivalent exponential form. I've got my three numbers, so here we go. The base of my logarithm is the base of my exponent. The logarithm itself is always equal to an exponent. So we've got negative 3 here, and I've got 1 over 125 over here. All right, so again, I'm going to erase my circles and write this up just a little bit cleaner. So we've got five to the negative three equaling one over 125. And again, if we wanna just check this, right? Five to the negative three is like saying one over five cubed, which is one over 125. All right, when you have those negative exponents, fractions start popping up, or at least reciprocals do. Okay. So moving along there, we have this exponential equation, 12 to the first is equal to 12. So if I want to write that as a logarithm, again, I'm going to have log, I have a base, an argument, and an exponent. All right, let's see what we got. The base of my power is 12, the exponent is 1, and that power is equal to 12, that's going to become my argument. Now again, I'm going to erase this, just clean it up a little bit. And we're going to have log base 12 of 12 is equal to 1. And let's just think about what that's saying, right? What exponent do I need on 12 to stay at 12 or 12 to get to 12? Well, 12 to the first power is 12. And that exponent there was 1. And this is one of the big or one of the properties of logs. When the base of your logarithm is the same as the number of your argument, when these two numbers are equal, that exponent will always be 1 because you don't want to change from base to argument. All right, let's take a look at this last one. I think i got to scooch this up just a bit more so we can see it. All right, we have log base 6 of 1 is equal to 0. I have a logarithmic equation. I want to write it as an exponential equation. There are my three circles. The base of my logarithm is the base of my power. The logarithm is equal to the exponent, so that's a zero, and my argument becomes what that power is equal to. So I have six to the zero equaling one, which is a true sentence, right? That's a, anything to the zero power is equal to one. So I have here six to the zero is equal to one. And again, if I wanted to use that circle equation, I knew I started here, so six to the zero is equal to one. And this leads us into one of the other major properties about logarithms. Let me erase this. So one property we stumbled upon was right up here. When the base of your logarithm and the argument of your logarithm are the same, the exponent will be 1. Here, when your argument is 1, your exponent will be 0 because anything raised to the 0 power is what gets you to 1. So whenever your argument is 1, that exponent is going to be 0. And the more familiar you get with these two ideas, the faster you can work through certain problems. So we'll see these pop up repeatedly as we go through the next few sections. All right, so with that, we're going to practice funkier looking logarithms. These have been semi straightforward. All right, but we're going to get a little bit more complicated as we move on. All right, I'll see you in a bit. Bye.